for FOMO. Let's talk some ARM. Now, Jenny, this has been a stock that's been a little bit more, I would say, cloudy over the last month or so, where the names like NVIDIA just seem like their range has kind of picked up. Uh, a name like in, uh, AMD has just you know, clearly turned around. It's way off its highs now. Uh, Supermicro kind of looks like uh, the, the uh, NVIDIA chart. ARM, of course, made its huge run up post earnings, and then it's been like stuck in the mud. It's had almost like no movement at all, it seems like, and just basically gone straight sideways. Yeah, and I would say part of it's probably because like there's a lack of historical like context on its price. I mean, I don't really know if that could explain some of the overall disapp I mean, disappointment as far as the hype goes, because this was our biggest IPO of 2023, and everyone was saying this is in everything AI, which is still the case. I mean, I think that that, that is still definitely the, the bullish argument. But, yeah, price activity, not super exciting. I will say the, the big news today that featured ARM was that Alphabet unveiled its ARM-based chips. They said the new processors will be available later this year. That was great news for Alphabet, which touched a new all-time high. ARM didn't react really at all because they're in pretty much everything. This is just their, their business model. But they did, has also been really going through, like, power consumption and ways to extend battery life. And I thought this was really interesting as their overall head of their company said this push for energy efficiency is needed in AI applications. So the chief executive at ARM did speak on Tuesday regarding the, the U.S. and Japan $110 million program to fund AI research at universities within the two countries, saying that overall that they're seeing a lot of these models like ChatGPT, for example, are just insatiable in terms of their thirst for electricity. So with this greater need for efficiency, he said by the end of the decade, AI data centers could consume as much as 20 to 25 percent of U.S. power requirements. Today, that's probably 4 percent or less. But that's not sustainable, he said, to be honest with you. So the power issue has drawn attention by some of these major technology executives in recent months, which has been a huge reason so many of these companies' stock prices have continued to surge. But these electric power plants are saying they have to rethink a lot of these these grids. And if you look at like the comparisons of energy usage to build out these data centers, it's fascinating. I mean, for example, they did say that ChatGPT requires about 2.9 watt hours of electricity on average, equivalent to turning on 60 watt light bulbs for just under three minutes. That's about 10 times as much as the average Google search. So the AI industry is set to grow. I mean, we're expecting, at least as far as those that are anticipating this massive market of growth, but then there's snags. And this is what I think is so compelling about the overall AI story right now is we're pricing so many of these names as if it's there, as if it's happened, as if there's no cost associated, no snags in the supply chain. But what happens if there's like major power grid issues or if there's major supply chain issues like Taiwan had an earthquake? Mm -hmm. What does that mean for the supply chain? Because all of these companies now are linked. So I'm going to go a little bit different uh, direction with this and try to explain, I guess, how I, how I see this. There's a difference between investing, which I think ties more into fundamentals, and trading, which is just more reactionary to price action. We notice it in things like Reddit or DJT, and we call them meme stocks. We say the fundamentals don't make sense, but this is just trading activity. That's why they go up so much, and that's why they go down so much. But we have a hard time saying the same thing about semiconductor stocks that objectively are having a positive fundamental story. The fundamental case for these stocks would argue that I think many of them should be much lower. But we're not in a fundamental investing environment right now. We're in a trading environment. Mm -hmm. And the reason I would say today that despite this being good news or bad news, or even that Microsoft said yesterday, at least according to The Verge, that they feel confident that a new Windows powered by ARM is going to be better than the MacBook Air powered by M3 chips, the stock's still lower, is because look at the market today. The only names that are higher today, that what do they have in common? Apple, Tesla, Intel. They've all struggled tremendously this year. What are the names that are down a lot today? NVIDIA, ARM. Uh, you keep going down the list, SMCI, names that we've talked about. These are names that have done really well this year. So this is just a rotation. The Russell 2000s up, the NASDAQ and, and the S&Ps are lower. To me, to me, this is trading, and we're talking about things that are applying to investing. So if we're going to talk investing, I think all of what you're saying is good, and it's important. 
But I think a lot of times we're, we're talking like two-week trades and we're talking like 2026. And it's like, I don't think 2026 matters over the next two weeks. That's a really good point. And th- th- I guess that that was sort of my case is that I feel like, unfortunately, a lot of these companies have become associated with the growth tied to some of these longer ahead dates, like 2026, 2028, 2030. So it's like we need to trade on the reality of right now, what these companies' healths look like right now. Because as far as, as Arm is concerned, well, it is in so many major companies what does the continued build out look like? That's just sort of my thought here with AI is I do think that there's becoming the very clear winners and losers.